So good afternoon. Uh, I'm Daniel. I work with uh, real time and scheduling things. And a good thing about uh, having friends is that you can fulfill half of the, the of the audience with your co-workers. <laughs> Thank you, Red Hat. I'm never alone. <laughs> so yeah, this more more than a discussion. This is like thinking aloud about the tool and about the future and about the problems that we have and get people engaged, make it, trying to work on of these uh, to-dos, trying to help on some requests, make me trying to get a yes from Steven from some of those, trying to avoid next, and, and that's life. So the, the RTLA is a tool that uh, is stored inside the tracing toolings. It's a user space tool, and uh, it's a binary, but the idea is to have a set of internal tools to help in the analysis of real-time problems. Because, uh, I mean, being fast is not enough. We need to explain why. And most importantly for us working every day with real time is explaining why it's breaking to give good good news for our managers, right? And say that, that that's the way to go and try to make it easier. Because, for example, on our workflow at Red Hat, we have people reporting bugs and we don't know why. And it's always stressful to try to restarting, debugging, and so on, and getting back and forth. So if we can try to minimize that, it's good for us and it's good for the community. So that, that's the idea behind RTLA. Uh, so we have three tools inside of it now. We have the timer lot that tries to measure the scheduling latency by doing sampling like cyclic test does. It's, it's like a, a cyclic test on asteroids. And uh, it's uh, in user space, we have a front end, let's say, like a, a hackish front end because it's, it's just command lines, right? And we have a tracer inside the kernel that uh, simulates the workload. We have the OS noise that tries to measure the operating system noise. It's a, a per CPU workload that tries to see what is disturbing that workload and helping to debug it. And hardware noise that tries to, to report if the hardware is causing glitches to the workload. These are the three tools and we hope to have more and, and just go some ideas here. Um, the idea, okay, just getting uh, one example of the timer dot, which is the, the tool that's most developed. The, all this thing, there is a lot of fresh paint on these tools, right? They, they are new. But um, to give an idea, we have like, generally you have a kernel side doing tracing things and simulating workloads. And we have a user space where we try to create a user interface, hopefully, hopefully friendly, right? And uh, trying to do some analysis if things breaks. And, and nowadays we are communicating using libtracefs, but there are probably other things that we can use, even in BPF as well. So this is just show a video of the how it, it works. I, let's copy, copy link address, uh, share an external video, and then you just do paste, control V, control V. PhD to do a control. <laughs> yeah, so just one example of the tool here. I'm using my system and it's running a background workload. And I told the tool to measure. Okay, good restart. I told the tool to measure my scheduling latency. And if there is a problem, like a latency higher than 30 microseconds, it stop and give me a root call, a root cause for that, uh, for that uh, high latency. And uh, here's an example of the output. It, it breaks down the latency into small pieces. There is a paper that explains this uh, and, and gives like a, a, a let's say, a, a fingerprint of the problem that should be easy enough like for my, my, my project manage, manager to say, okay, this is a repeat, repetition of this problem and help us debug. That, that's the idea, right? Trying to do the workload, do the measurement, getting trace, analyzing it, and give you an, 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 easy, an easy starting point. Uh, the tool also allows, uh, oh, okay, if, and if you guys want to make a question during this presentation, please do it. That's the, the idea. Steven, uh, Julia has a question. It's a very simple question. Is this just user space or kernel space or both spaces? Both, both things. It's, uh, if I, okay. Uh, I, I will stop the, uh, in the previous slide I showed like, I, I will have to stop the video, I might have probably, there is, the, there is a tracer that simulates the workload and it has a set of trace points 
that try to give me the source of each noise. And they are optimizing kernel to avoid like false uh, positives. And these trace points give me the information and user space, I collect them and try to make it uh, more human readable. At the end, it's the same idea that you're trying to do, like trying to make those traces easier to, to read. And the, and the tool also, because it's in the tracing, it also allows us to do other, extend the analysis with other tracing. I can enable other trace points with these. I can enable, uh, let's say here, I can enable histograms, like I'll show you a command line. So I can, I don't I can like enable histograms using ftrace and say, okay, collect me these histograms of each noise that is causing and uh, and using this other, using as interface for other things from tracing, right? That's that's the idea, facilitating the users so I can luckily doing, doing, while doing CI, getting the root cause for a bad number and try to act. Or a customer get a bad number, I run this command line, do me the report. Uh, that is the basic idea, and it is one example, right? Let me stop the video. How do I stop the video? Two kernel developers to stop a video. <laughs> uh, I think it's yeah, where's the stop sharing. Oh, good. Oh, Julia, this is the. Uh, so in this part here, the, the blue part is in kernel and the green part is in user space, and I try to connect both and, and as best as I can. <clears throat> uh, okay, so things that I have on my to-do list that if there are people interested on, on working on it or having ideas, things are welcome. We are all overloaded, right? Uh, we have this tracer that is the OS noise tracer. It's dispatch uh, per CPU uh, busy loop. And while you're doing it, there is some sort of trace points that I show here. That the idea of these trace points is try to measure. Okay, I have my workload running. If some something prompts the workload, sorry. Two, two kernel developers and a special people trying to make it happen. So we have this, this per CPU workload. And uh, when, when like it's preempted or an interrupt happens, it just reports a single line saying, okay, I had this noise from a thread for this amount of time. And, uh, and the idea from having these trace points is that I can have like free of nested interference uh, execution times that helps to make my execution times more precise. So in the future, we can do like a probabilist worst case execution time analysis. So trying to refine things to fit them into the theory of real-time systems, right? Because there are many cool things there that we can apply. So the that, that the OS noise tracer is, is a per CPU workload. It runs and if there are interferences, it prints, okay, this interference happened and this for this amount of time. Uh, now, nowadays we have uh, the tracer starts the workload, but it's in kernel. It was an easier way to make it happen. The uh, timer lot tracer can, can run in user space, uh, but I need to do still do the, the OS and OS running user space workload. Uh, and doing the report, the, the, the root cause analysis for this user space uh, high noise, right? And uh, the, the thing I have, I need to solve to, to, to make the, the user space uh, thing, thing to work is a way, find a way to share a variable. It's, the, it's, it's find a way to share a variable that I use a per CPU variable with user space that I could use like atomic operations. That's, if I can find that, that solution, it's a, I, I have a per CPU variable that, in kernel, and I use, in kernel, I use like barriers and local per CPU data, like to, to make it uh, atomic. It would be interesting if I could access that variable in user space, a per CPU. What would be the best way to do it? Yeah, but if, if, if you have a... a, a yeah. Okay, use RSEC. <clears throat> Rest of all sequences. Oh, good. So, so basically, our sec is going to allow you to kind of create those small critical sections that allow you to 
uh, update those per CPU uh, data element from hmm. user space and access them. Uh, so, so, and then, so you're mapping. Yeah. <laughs> Over here, yeah. So, so you create a mapping from user space with that per CPU data, and then you map that in the kernel. So the kernel also has have access to it. And then you get shared per CPU oh. data between kernel. Oh, perfect. And yeah, that, that 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 was exactly what I was looking for. I, I didn't know how to share a per CPU variable with, with user space yeah. because I did it first in kernel because I can use these facilities. Like a, uh, I can put a barrier here. I can use local data. I know which kind of data structure to use. Yeah. In user space, I didn't. And do you just need to read that from user space, or you need to also modify? Read. It? Just read. Just read. So I, I even read simpler, it. Right? I read it read the time and read it back again to see if my timer is consistent. So in that case, you don't really need a RSEC uh, critical section, oh, right? I know I need because uh, this in, in kernel data is the counter of interrupts that I had on that CPU. But you just need to index by CPU number to read that information. You, you oh, have an array it, it could be, it could right? be a vector. It could be a vector. Yes. Make, yeah. Make it cache line aligned for the elements and you mm -hmm. should be good. Okay. Oh, good. Good. No, it's good that we have a, a standard uh, interface for that. And so uh, I'm not sure whether you have tried the BPF per CPU hash map. Or because I need to do a array. system call to get the values, don't I? I uh, need a. Uh, so you want to get a user space like on the local CPU? I. I okay. I, I. The first version of this thing was in the BPF. I like the BPF. I tried it. What? What I what I didn't find was a way to get the the value of the per CPU map uh, without, without having like system calls. Without the system call. Without system call. You need to get for all CPU or just local CPU. For it can be only local CPU. So we we're looking at something you if you can unmap something yeah. and just do that. That's a... do, do, do we have it? Because when I, when I try, the first implementation was in EBPF, but I didn't have, I didn't find that option. Yeah, probably not yet. I'll double check. Yeah. We, we, were, we have discussions on Good. that direction. No, it, it, that, that, that's interesting. The first version of the OS Noise 2 was using EBPF. Then I had to move to the kernel because I couldn't do this this because synchronization. The of is just yeah, because I'm trying to, to measure things like on a nanosecond, as small as possible. And then the system call was uh, too large of overhead. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. that's really that... a use case we... Yeah. Actually, yeah. so basically all you need to get is a memory map of, of like per CPU variables, memory map, one memory map location. You don't yes. even have to use our second after that. Right, no, but what I'm saying is what, one thing I'm thinking if you do is why don't you, I mean, are you still using a TraceFS file system to do this? So I can I, use it, yeah. I mean, you have your OS noise. I mean, is it going to be part of OS The OS director. OS? What? So say if OS noise or something like that, you have a file in there, you just open it and map it and gives it to you. Okay, so and then I can use this with... Okay, and can and that I... That you could do right now, today. Yeah, is that the best way? I mean, it, it's the best way is what works. Okay, but is that acceptable? Uh, yeah, I, I, okay. yeah, I already do, no, that. I mean, I, I do if you... that. I mean, I've done that code before. I mean, uh, user space. Yeah, in, the, in the, the thread, like two weeks yeah. ago, you, you sent yeah. like maybe so, mapping. Yeah, no, just go in and just do the MMAP call. You just have to add an MMAP. No, because look, 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 look from my perspective. Like I'm sending you a patch to memory map kernel to yeah. user space. It smells like an egg, but no, it doesn't. I'm not, I'm not going egg. I'm not <laughs> okay. going egg. Oof, good. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, good enough. Uh, so, Daniel, do you have plans to uh, to to make these auto analysis available for other tools? Yes, that that's that's the idea. So now we have the timer lot because it's the the problem that I, I I studied more. Then it would be added it to the OS noise. There is a work that I'm doing with Paolo Bonzini, the the KVM guy, that we are getting information from the vCPU when the vCPU is preempted. And if it's preempted like with a lightweight uh, or a heavyweight interrupt, and you get those numbers from from the guest, that's that, that's where the things are, are going. And and then added an auto analysis. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> and also one thing that uh, Valentin is, is working hey, Valentin, is having like a way to do. Okay, I have an API noise on a, a CPU. And then he's trying to find a way to correlate these API noise with the source 
and that's another the, the source of the API who sent it, and uh, that would be another interesting because that's a common uh, analysis that people do on fully isolated systems, and that's something that uh, we can motivate uh, Valentum to to work on. Yeah. Uh, just one, one small thing. Mm. If you need to extend uh, this workload so that on the user space side, you would like to co collect metrics, this is where you could use RSEC and per CPU mm -hmm. data to do things in user space and efficiently increment counters, for instance, mm -hmm. if you need that. Yeah. yeah. No, but it's nice to have the, all these options and yeah. try out and, and, make it, and make it also. Because if it, another thing that there is here, so here I'm creating like a, a specific a testing workload. But in the field, people might have their own workload, right? <clears throat> so for the timer lot tracer, uh, we can have like any workload being activated by timer lot. And then the tool should do the auto analysis for the scheduling latency of any workload. So the idea is to make it generic. Having all these multiple ways to do, so if a person would like to do it in a BPF, good. If a person would like to do it in RSEC, good. So what I would, so what I would suggest is I'll go so I get the camera. Should be following me. I don't know why it's not. Hello. You like me? It's not following. Anyway, uh, I need it, it likes you. <laughs> so basically, if you just write the, uh, no matter how it's like memory mapped, or whatever, just write it generically, and maybe you can even have it injected in BPF or memory map. Like I said, it's perfectly fine to have a memory map and even do writes to the memory. The, map, so yeah, it's just reading. Yeah. and it can even you can do magic where it's opened up, memory mapped it. And it's only it's that special data just for that one mm -hmm. process. And another process could open it up and get another set. So it's not even even though there are two yeah. two tasks that yeah. are memory mapping the same thing. You actually give it two different fields, and that's perfectly fine. Yeah, and it's easy. Yeah. It's a... Actually, it is actually really easy. So uh, just one give update. I, I overcomplicated the problem. So if you want, you have a remap, and you probably use some cash align uh, uh, correctly. It's already like you can unmap it. Yeah, yeah. What I was thinking about is something like uh, fancier that you want uh, the C the kernel to update your offset for you and a local CPU. No, it doesn't. Need, it doesn't need. If you need the global, that thing's already there. Yeah, if you can do like MMAP, we solve the problem for the BPF, so problem for everything. That back in the day, I was trying to use the per CPU variable in the BPF to use only BPF. If it's possible to do more and more map and doesn't look like hackish, it's it's good for everyone. It's, it smells like hockey for it. It's maybe bad. Anyone else? Okay. I, wait, 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 can, wait, 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 wait. I can, I can. Okay, I can, I have more things to, to ask. Oh, yeah, yeah. Two. Oh, okay, just, just go on. There are other tools that I'm working. One is like to get this execution time that I already get with the OS noise trace points. It's possible to get it without the workload. And then try to use probably worst case execution time analysis because the data is as the noise, the data about the noise is as free of, uh, of noise as we can get. Uh, okay. There's another thing is is trying to match the the cache noise for each of these noises. Oh, my hand is on the uh, the cache noise on each of these noises, and uh, and we can use like per performance counters. There, that's another idea. So we have like the execution time and how much cache noise the noise gave. And, and there's another work that, okay, there's even other problems here, but another thing that I would like to, to add to the tool is, is a, a pseudo, a pseudo random, randomly, a random, pseudo random uh, workload generator that would generate a, a workload that we can use to test the SCAD deadline or any real-time scheduler. But uh, the thing about, about being used on the test is that we, we should have to do a schedulability analysis of the task set. So for example, generate me a, a, a task set that is schedulable under a global scheduler on four CPUs with uh, sporadic activation and average execution time of that. And see if the scheduler is giving the expected result from the analysis. And uh, this is more some more academic kind of tool that, that would be very useful for us in practice. But finally, the okay, is my time over? Well, we're entering break time now, so it's, you want to finish the slide? Yeah, I'll, I'll finish this. There is more, like, there was the requests. 
Okay, I will finish one. I, I would like to add a, another, there's another tool that's formally proof scheduling analysis, but that's for, for the future. Can we run two traces at once in the same instance? Going straight to the point. Because like I can use timerlot, but for me to use timerlot and the function tracer, I need to have two instances. But the timerlot and the function tracer, they are not, uh, um, I know I can use a function graph tracer and a function tracer. It doesn't make sense to run them all together. But can I run timer lot and, and uh, function tracer in the same uh, uh, instance? Right now, because tracers are special because they're kind of mm -hmm. good things, you can't do that. But what you could possibly do if like two overlap is cre create a new function. Uh, function timer lot tracer? Yes, that's kind of like, I've actually had tracers like wake up latency tracer could use a function graph tracing instead of function tracing. Oh, okay. So wake up tracing to use function yeah. tracing that, I, I, but they make a separate tracer that. Yeah. I, can, I can even use the same tracer enabling an option. Yes. Okay. That's good. exactly what the wake up latency does. Okay, I, I can like OS noise options, function tracer, yep. and then, oh, yes. good. Yes. Sweet. A lot of next that are actually next. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then, okay, just done. We can, we can discuss this. We'll discuss it offline. Anyway, yeah. uh, 